name to uh, circle of love. Yo. Thank you for tuning in to Circle of Love with your host Cassandra Ambers. And to my left, Ella Coleman. And to my right, Gina Walker. Oh my God, thank you for locking it in. You could have been so many places, but you came here because you know you're going to feel the warmth. You're going to feel the kindness, the joy, and the love. And you know you're going to get the truth. When you tune into the Circle of Love, not only are you going to feel love, but you're going to get the truth. Because the Bible said, you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. How y'all doing today? It is sunny outside. It's beautiful. That's all I can ask for. The sun is shining. Birds are chirping. I'm going outside. I'm starting to get a tan. I'm happy. All right. How about you? Amen. It's, yes. it's, it's, it's been a bless. <laughs> Even through the storm, the rain, it's, 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 it's a blessed time. It is just a blessed time because, for one thing, we're able to share love. Sharing love is what this is all about. Sharing our experiences. And when we share our experiences, we don't want, you know, like I, I don't want you to feel sorry for me. If I tell you my testimony and I tell you what I've been through, it's not for no one to, I, I don't want no pity. I'm over it. That's why I can talk about it. Because my experience and my, what I've been through should be able to encourage you um, uh, encourage you and help you move forward. That's why right, I share it. It's made you the strong woman you are. Yes. And without those experiences, you wouldn't be sitting here in this seat right exactly. now. Exactly. You wouldn't be able to sit here. If you... Amen. So thank you for locking it in. But we got our um, scripture we want to go ahead and read to you. Amen. And listen, just bear with us, okay? We, we, this, you know, I, I don't want to say like we wear um, like some superstars or anything. This is our, this is our fourth show. So, you know, work it's with us, okay? It's, it's coming, coming along. And, and um, <clears throat> the more you do it, the more better we get. Amen. So bear with us. Right. Amen. All right, let's jump into scripture. We're reading out of Ephesians 3, and we're going to start at verse 14. It is for this reason that I bow my knees before the Father, after whom all families in heaven above and on earth below receive their names and pray. Does anything stand out on that to you? Uh, for me, uh, it lets us know that God knows us by name, and we are, we are under his umbrella, under his name, no matter what we are, uh, how different we are, that we are all one family. Right. And... Uh, even though we are all different nationalities, different nations, uh, different clans, and so forth, we are still all one in Christ Jesus. Growing and in Jesus. Growing in Jesus and, and being able to uh, have authority, power, and dominion as he died for us and was raised from the dead for us to have. Because right. that resurrection power is resident in us through the blessed Holy Spirit. That Holy Spirit can come and reside in you at any time. He, 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 all you have to do is just believe and receive. Uh, God is just that generous. He's not holding back. Uh, he is lavishing now. He is pouring out His Spirit on all That's flesh. Right. And, and this is why right. we have the opportunity to uh, share, mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to care, to uh, open uh, our hearts to uh, present a loving God to you because that's who right. He is. Yeah. Right. And, and that's who we represent. Right. And in the next verse, it starts talking about that. Father, out of your honorable and glorious riches, strengthen your people. Fill their souls with the power of your spirit. Right. And mm. that's the topic. Mm. Growing in Jesus. Yes. That's the topic. It's yes. growing in Jesus. So what I want you to know on today, don't grow in yourself, but grow in Jesus. Right. You know, everybody, when you talk about growth, everybody want to grow in things. I don't, you know, it's that everybody wants a bigger car. Everybody wants a bigger house. People want bigger this, bigger money, bigger jobs, bigger this. Grow in Jesus. And how you grow in Jesus, the first verse that she read, Four was that get on your knees. Yes. Yep. Fall down on your knees. A lot of times, listen, I don't want to sit under nobody preaching and teaching and you ain't bowing down on your knees. 
You know what I'm saying? It's good to be on cameras, but I need to know what you're doing behind cameras. Right. Are you on your knees? I want to teach you how to grow in the things of God. Don't grow in, uh, uh, in my own might, in my own strength. Grow in Jesus. And how do you grow in Jesus? You start filling up your spiritual tank. Yes. And there's so many people that are on E, but you've got to fill that tank up. And that's, you know, in our walk, the more we read, the more we pray, the more we praise. So I know, like, I find my, um, my biggest time with God is during praise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I love to sing, and I'm always singing out to Him, and I can feel myself just getting mm. filled up all mm. the time. Mm. You know, in my darkest moments, I turn something on, and I hear something, and I mm. just, it just, it fills me up. You know, mm. the thing about this, um, you know, it's like in the spirit, there's a filling station. Mm -hmm. And anytime you feel that you're going, let's say below half a tank, I think you really have to, no, don't even wait that long. Mm -hmm. But it's time for you to fill up, mm -hmm. do what God really wants you to do. He wants communion. He mm -hmm. wants a relationship right. with us. And um, no. seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these other things will be added. Go right. to the next verse. Yeah, and so then I continue. So fill their souls with the power of your spirit so that through the faith the anointed one will reside in their hearts. May love be the rich soil where their lives take root. May it be the bedrock where their lives are founded so that together with all of your people they will have the power to understand that the love of the anointed is infinitely long wide, high, and deep, surpassing everything anyone previously experienced. God, may your fullness flood through their entire beings. How do you grow in the things of God? You grow by first attending church. You sit under a man of God who's preaching the, the truth, teaching the word of God. How do you grow in the things of God? You study to show yourself approved. How do you grow in God? By prayer, by relationship. How do you grow in the things of God by not compromising, not bowing? How do you grow in the things of God by doing what's right, what's doing what's honest, what's doing what's truth? How do you grow in the things of God by loving God, by worshiping Him, right. by praising Him? Mm -hmm. Lift up in holy hands. Mm -hmm. How do you grow in God? Um, one of the things that Jesus said, and we always go back to the red letters because it's so powerful when Jesus spoke and the fact that we even have his words and that we can re refer back to them. One of the things he says is that if you are to be my disciple, you are to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow mm -hmm. me. What does that mean? That means that God becomes first. Mm -hmm. He becomes first in your life. Mm -hmm. He becomes the priority uh, and he becomes your first uh, um, your first fruit, really. You, you want to give every all your first fruit, all of everything that comes to you first to God. Give yourself to God first, and then everything else will fall into place. Mm -hmm. He wants you. He, you know, God, it's not that He needs our money. You know, it's a it's a gesture to pay the tithe. It's 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 a, it's a obedience to it's pay trust, the tithe. It's trusting it's him. The, it's, it's trusting, trusting him. him. Mm -hmm. It's trusting him and obeying him. Obeying him. Right. Obeying him. Key. And when we trust and obey, then we are going to grow because every mm -hmm. time that we do it God's way, mm -hmm. God also enables us mm -hmm. to uh, be stronger in Him. Mm -hmm. He enables us to. Uh, do signs, miracles, and wonders when we walk out there and do it His way. When we forsake all, the other thing is in the discipleship is forsaking all for God. That means that if no one should be able to stop you from loving and from serving your God. Right. Our God is so awesome and so powerful. He puts breath in us. He puts life, His very life in grow us. Grow in the things of, of God. God. That's and right. how do you grow, grow in Him? Oh my God. By loving each other. Loving. That's you have to one. love each other. That's the big one. You know what? Because that's what people are lacking mm -hmm. is love. Oh, but does a lot of that stuff stem from not being able to forgive people? From unforgiveness? I mean, that, that's, I think, and that's a lot of all society. I mean, we've got people, you, you know, that. going against cultures from mm -hmm. 200 years ago. Well, I can't talk with them. I can't associate with them. Why? Forgive them already. Move on and show love. How do you grow? Learn how to forgive your mom. Some of y'all, your mother uh, did some horrible things to you. Listen, and you walking in unforgiveness. Your father wasn't there for you. 
Forgive your dad. Forgive, Forgive him. him. Forgive. Your husband did something horrible to you. Your wife did something horrible to you. Your kids, somebody in your family um, has molested you, have raped you, and you have never forgiven them. You have to learn how to release them so that you can grow in the things of God. Right. Somebody has been verbally abusive to you. You went through some very, very abusive situations. Not only verbally abusive, but sexually abusive. And you cannot shake that thing. Listen, shake it so you can grow. You are stagnating yourself because you can't shake this stuff, and, shake this stuff, shake this and stuff. And that's keeping that tank. So you've got this, this Jesus tank, this love tank. And you're right here, you got half of it. And you can't even fill up the rest of it because it's got that hurt and it's got that resentment towards other people. And then once you let that go, you know, that's where it slowly starts going up and going up until you're, you're just filled up. Your pastor hurts you. Your church hurts you. Okay. Have you ever been in a church and you went to a church and you didn't know nobody and these people calling themselves saints and they calling themselves mothers and you confided in them and you told them something and then the next week you go back to church and it's preached all over the pulpit? That, that's very offensive. That's, that, that, that wounds your spirit. And sometimes you carry that stuff. You have to learn how to shake it. Uh, and the only way to shake it is to forgive. Uh, because when you are offended, you have to get, uh, you have to, add, first of all, go to God. Let Him know how you feel. Right. And ask him to help you with those feelings. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the feelings can be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. We can't go by our feelings. We have to go by what God has told us. Mm -hmm. And so what he has said in his word. And so when you're hurt, when, it, it, you might be in a situation like what Cassandra said, you know, where you've just been uh, attacked by people mm -hmm. or anything. And, but when this happens to you, when you're rejected, when, mm -hmm. you're, when you're molested, when you're uh, mm -hmm. just completely mm -hmm. disrespected, mm -hmm. I think that it's a time then that you want to go to God mm -hmm. and pray. Get on your knees. Mm -hmm. Don't get angry and start being hateful and all this. Go to God and tell God. But the God Bible says about. be angry, but sin not. So sin these, not. Are, these are... These are yeah. Uh, these are uh, feelings that we're going to go through. You're right, going to yes. get angry. But you got to take it to God. Right. You have to take it to God. Right. You have to take, right. to take it anger right. to God. That's right. That's basically what I'm saying. Yeah. You have to take that anger to God. You have to take that pain mm -hmm. to God. Yes. You have to hand it over into and say, God, this is the way I feel. Be honest with God. You already know how you feel anyway. Mm -hmm. Just say, you know, I was hurt. I was disrespected. You know, I was messed up. Listen, somebody might have called you crazy. Yeah. Shake it. That's okay. You're yeah. not crazy. I'm letting you know right now, you ain't crazy. You are anointed. You're appointed. You're called of God. There's nothing wrong with you. They called you a witch. You're not a witch, okay? I'm here to let you know you're not a witch, okay? You are called. You're anointed. You're, you're set apart for such a time. They called you a Jezebel. They called you a homemonger. They called you a hoe. You're not that. I want you to know you're not a bad person. I'm, I'm speaking life into your spirit by the Holy Ghost. You're not those things. You're not the, 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 uh, the curse words that they have cursed. People have cursed you. People have hedged you. People have put spells on you. On you. You're not that. You're not that. Then it, it won't work. You're who he says you are. Right. And then this is are. the thing. You when when these kind of offenses come, and and Jesus said offenses will come. That's right. They That's right. will come. That's right. But then the way that we handle the offense is really the test. Mm -hmm. This these are tests. Let's, let's see, will you go to God or will you take it into your own hands right. and be hateful, resentful, mad, and angry? Of course you might feel these feelings, mm -hmm. but then that's where you give them over to Christ. He mm -hmm. said, cast your burdens up on me mm -hmm. because I care for you. Mm -hmm. So Jesus has already made a way mm -hmm. for you. And that's what you have to realize. This is These are not things that you can overcome mm -hmm. just because you feel that you are tough. Mm -hmm. You have to be strong in God, mm -hmm. not in yourself. That's right. Because you cannot do uh, and change your heart. Mm -hmm. If you are, um, if you can't, if you haven't forgiven someone, mm -hmm. you can't just change your heart. Mm -hmm. You can go to God and say, God, I, I don't see how I can forgive him, but I'm, I'm believing that if I trust you, mm -hmm. that you'll help me through this and make me able to forgive them. And, and, and that's then, all it is. It's just giving it over to God and being serious and mm -hmm. sincere. Mm -hmm. That's all God wants. He just wants you to be honest. He wants you. You ain't got to say no 
kind of perfect prayer. You just have to go to him and be real and be honest. And he will meet you there and he will take care of it. I've seen him take care of it for me and he'll take care of it for you. Yeah, Amen. Will. Amen. And I wanted to say that the toughness. God, you know what? God wants us to take off our mask. Mm -hmm. Too many of us are walking around with masks. And, and, and we're pretending and we're acting like we're something but mm -hmm. deep down inside we're totally two different people. Mm -hmm. We act one way with our family. We act another way when we at the church. We act another way when we at work. And then when we come home we act like the devil. And God is trying to tell us to stop pretending and acting like we all got it together when we really don't yeah. and if God would take his head off of us mm -hmm. and take his calling off of us and uncover us really yeah my yeah. God from Zion I'll be the first one to tell you I'm a mess and I know I've touched on that before <laughs> you, you know you got a family coming into church and they're all happy and they were just arguing in the car you know mama's like I'm gonna knock you out you don't knock it off you know but then mm -hmm. okay kids we're walking in let's look good and those are the, mm -hmm. those things when you start putting those there. Those are blocking your your relationship because our relationship can also with Christ it can build by the people that we're in relations with. Mm -hmm. And when we don't open up to them and tell them what's really going on in our lives and where we're broken at, mm -hmm. that hinders us and it keeps us from that growth. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what else hinders <clears throat> you what? from you being you you from being fake yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For not being honest yourself. Right. Right. You cannot grow and be in faith. You That's cannot, true. you can't grow being a phony. You cannot. And I'm, I'm the first to say it. Do you, I'm going to just be honest. Do you know that this year is the first year that I came into myself and I've been in the church for 25 years? You lose it yourself. Can, it, you can truly lose what God had intended. I was the one that would beat, beat people purpose. over the head with the Bible, but was hurting inside. Mm -hmm. I would go to church and literally mm -hmm. preach the word. Now I'm preaching, mm -hmm. but I wasn't preaching in love. I was preaching, I thought I was doing the right thing, right. Mm -hmm. but I was preaching when I had to really take a self-awareness, is that mm -hmm. what it is, a self-check? Yeah, so I had to do something, you know, I'm always looking at everybody, you know what the Bible says, when one hand is, you, why are you pointing one at one, this, Four four coming at you. back at you. Mm -hmm. And so I had to realize, like, look, this, 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 you, you got to work on yourself. Yeah, you do. You, have you got to stop getting other people together and try to get yourself together. And I have realized that you preach through pain. That's why they said hurting people hurt people. Mm -hmm. And here I had on this facade that everything was all good. This is me. I got tired of protect, uh, uh, mm -hmm. pretending. Mm -hmm. My husband was a pastor, ex-husband was a pastor. We passed it for 10 years. And you have to set yourself together. You pretend to be this. You pretend you've got it all together. You, you're the perfect wife, yeah. perfect pastor's wife. And, and it, it's not, that's not it's the case. Not. It's not the case because everybody is broken in some aspect. Some kind of way. Go, we all have been go. broken in some kind right, of way. We've might... all been in pain. We've all suffered. We've all gone through. And we just seem, we just seem to just confess up and just make it clean and make it clear uh, because God wants us to be real. Uh, and, you know, the thing about it is we have dealt with religion and we have to understand that religion will cause you to be one way, one panic demand. Mm -hmm. That, you know, no matter it's what cultish. happens. No, it's right. very cultish. Right. And you got to be careful. Yeah. You not know. to get caught up in the cultish. Right. And all operating in the name of Jesus. Just you know what this lady said to me one time? And this is what she said. Mm -hmm. She used to deal with like wicker. Oh, wicked. Wicked. I don't, yeah, you yeah. See, I don't even know the name. But anyway. And she <laughs> said, we went to this church. And she said, Miss Aaron's, mm -hmm. this church, I don't feel right about it. Because she had just got saved. And feel the Holy Ghost. She said, I don't feel right about it. I said, why? She said, because it's the same spirit that I'm used to back when I used to practice that. She picked up on it. She picked up she on it. it. She decided. But they, were, they had a pulpit. Right. They were preaching Jesus. So we got to be careful, church. Be I careful. Now, here's the thing. 
When it comes to the soda. Why are you laughing, Oh, no, I'm just thinking of the guy. No, I'm thinking of the guy I just met. I just invited this random guy I was telling you that I met at the barbershop at church. And he's like, I went to a, a Christian church. I thought it was a non-denomination church. Turned out they were Wiccans, which is witches. Wow. And it's a lot of that going yeah, on. Yeah, and he thought. It, it said it was a Christian yeah. church outside. Yeah. And he's like, I thought I was going to hell. I was like, it's okay. It's you okay. Don't, you don't have anyway, to go to hell because you went in there. Right. But anyway, go ahead. But, you know, and, and here's the thing. How do you discern them? There, there are two main ways. There are several ways you can discern. Mm -hmm. Discernment is really, really what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And the only way to discern is when you stay close to God. And then God puts something in you. There's some red, little red flags that pop mm -hmm. up, and you know something's not right here. Mm -hmm. um, that's like an internal uh, mechanism that God has put in you mm -hmm. to let you know when you're in a place that's not of Him. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing for discernment is. Uh, the fruit of the people that are in that place. Right. If you don't see any love, joy, peace, long suffering, I mean if you don't see any fruit, that's right. Uh, Get out. you have to say that that is not God. Shake the dust. Because we know we know saints by their fruit. Mm -hmm. We know disciples by their fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the other thing is just the word of God mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The word of God if someone is telling you something and they're practicing something mm -hmm. that doesn't line up with the Word of God, that's why you have to study to show yourself approved because you have to know this before you go in these places or before somebody comes up to you with something. And when you know this, then you can discern. So then we have the Word of God. We have, uh, we have the Spirit of the Lord, which mm -hmm. dwells in us, which is really our greatest asset. In right. fact, we have the residence of the Holy Spirit. Right. And then uh, we have, uh, we have a, a, something that God has put on the inside of us that lets us know when something's not right. That's right. right. Just lets us know something's not right here. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, you know, you need to go back to God. And don't be listening to them. Mm -hmm. You need to go to back to the Lord mm -hmm. and then find out from God what is God saying. If they're not right, God is not going to tell you to go back up in there. Not unless you're strong enough to cast so out some standing, demons or right. something. We're standing and then mm -hmm. he probably wouldn't send you by yourself. So, you know, we have to understand these things. Mm -hmm. And there's so much confusion in the world. Mm -hmm. But the... There is no confusion in the kingdom of God. The devil is the author of confusion. That's right. He's the author of confusion. That's right. Do not allow him to deter. That's the right. Bible, don't look to the left. Don't. don't look to the right. But focus on Jesus. Let, let me say it again. Don't look to the left. Let me do a little rap. Don't look to the left. I thought right. Beyonce was coming. Don't look to the right. right. <laughs> but focus we on Jesus. Honest. We but okay. focus on Jesus. Jesus. Amen. And so that's what we want you to do. We yes. want you to grow. At, gr and listen, you're going to make some mistakes. Get back up. You're going to make some errors. Get back up. I, if you have a question, said, Miss Aarons, Cassandra, have you ever made mistakes? Mm -hmm. I make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> but you know what? I don't dwell in them. That's right. I ask that's God right. to forgive me. That's right. I always say, God, forgive me of my past, my present, and my future. Right. I don't even know what my future gonna hold, but I know I'm gonna mess up. So oh, yeah. already, I'm already prophetically. But saying, you know who holds your future. That's right. And that's what gives you the reassurance that no matter what comes at you, no matter what happens, your future has already been bought and paid for with the blood of Jesus. Well, and so that makes us, that puts us in a very, very advantageous position. Mm -hmm. We have the advantage, we really do. The enemy wants us to think that we don't, but we actually do. We are the most blessed people on the planet. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because we have the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, which is the most powerful person on earth right now, is the That's Holy right. Spirit. He is a person. That's right. He is a person. He is not a thing. He is a person. And He is holy, and He's righteous, and He indwells those who give their hearts to Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, I don't, I'm not saying I love them just because I say I love them, but it is hard to meet. I'm going to tell you this. When you find good people, you better hold on to them. That's right. Good people <laughs> yeah. in it's Christ true. is hard to find. It's, listen, it's listen, true. listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> we I've been around a long time, and, so, and I appreciate them because they, 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 they bring a balance. Yeah. And I like people who bring, you want people who bring a balance in your life. 
you know, I might get off course and might say something that's worldly or I might say something unethical. You need people like Ella gonna say, uh-uh, break, break it back. Break it back, reel it back. Reel it back, back. come on, come on, come on. Come on. Yeah. And then you got Gina say, uh-uh, well, let's get to the word, Ephesians. <laughs> Where are we at, what? Right. <laughs> so, but you need people in your life that's, if you got somebody that's always gonna cheer you when you wrong, you with the wrong crowd. I don't want to be with nobody who's going who, who's to see me fall, see me go to hell, see me make errors, see me be laughed at. You don't want to surround yourself with those type of people. And I want you to know, I'm talking to an audience today, people are laughing at you, but you know what God told me to tell you? That, they, that he's going to have the last laugh. People, people are laughing, they're making fun of you, they, 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 they think it's a joke. People want to see you make a mistake. I'm looking, I, 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 I'm here, I'm here with these wonderful women on TV, but you know what? It's not the good that we do, it's not going to be the good that we say, it's not going to be the lies that we touch. They're going to be looking at, look at her hair, her hair is all like not nice. They're going to be looking at our shoes like, what kind of shoes is that? And You know, like, oh, they're going to be like, oh, she don't... Well, she was touching her uh, her nose and look at her. I mean, and, and, and so we want you to stay focused. Yeah. We really don't listen. Well, oh, here, I'm going to focus you back. Yeah. Hold on, hold on. This is what we're talking about. Okay. So we want to get filled up on Jesus. So, Miss Ella, if you could pick something to tell somebody that's kind of, their tank sound empty, what is your one thing that they could do every day to start filling that tank? I would say... Spend time with God, even if you have to go in the restroom stall at work, you know, into the bathroom. Spend time with God. Uh, set appointments with God. When people say, can you do this, can you do that? I got an appointment, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Well, you do have an appointment, you have an appointment with God. Mm -hmm. So when you start to, to include God in your time, mm -hmm. then God is able then to start filling you and filling you and filling you and filling you. Mm -hmm. But when you don't take time for God and you take time for people, what happens is people can't really help you. Mm -hmm. They can't do what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Only God can do what right. needs to be done. Amen. Stop having itching ears. That's what I want you to do. <laughs> Stop having itching ears. And what that means is believe in everything people are saying. This is what you, you go conference to conference, you go revival to revival, you go to this church, you go to this church to this church, because you got an itching ear, because you want to hear something that's going to tickle you. And then once yes. you tickle, you ain't got nothing. You ain't got no fruit, you ain't got no manifestation, you ain't got no love, and you ain't got no money because you don't been prophesied you know what I'm saying? They don't prophesy money out of you. You got to <laughs> learn how to stop having itching ears and hear from God. Channel your ears. Look, look to the hill will come with all your help. Listen, people can't tell me anything if it's not lined up with God. Ah. But Gina is like you. Anybody when, when you meet her, everybody just loves her. Amen. Yeah, I can, and and, I um, and I thank God for God sending me these two women um, to work with my personality because my personality is not uh, is, is not easy. But um, when you get to know me, you know that I'm oh, the most spirit. loving person. Amen. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit. She can't. They can't work without. They can't work with me without the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Amen. But thank you for tuning in to um, Circle of Love. I'm Gina, Ella, and Cassandra. Y'all have an awesome time. We'll see you next Wednesday at 11:30. Hey, hey, God bless. Bye.